Get pumped. Joining us on He's Bobby pumped. B's hotline now, World Series champion, uh, Red Sox pumped. Hall of Famer, Jonathan Papelbon Woo. joins us. And uh, JP, are you still the Phillies all-time saves leader and the Red Sox all-time saves leader? Yes, I, I am actually. There you go, Daryl. Look at you. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm cheating. I'm doing. I'm, I, I I never usually do this because I hate my own Wikipedia page. But I, I just happen to rip this off the wi- Wikipedia. That's impressive as hell, dude. That's not just one team. You're the all-time saves leader. Two teams. Damn right. You're the all-time saves leader, man. Congrats on that. But uh, great yeah, to have. Go ahead. Ornery fans and those fan bases too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little. I don't know. I thought Philly was a little bit more violent than Boston, um, as far as the way they. But you were not a visitor that much there. When I was a visiting player there for seven years, they had a net over the bullpen because they throw so much crap at us. So, um, but it always it always <laughs> pumped you up. But I, I wanted to get you on, brother. Talk about the uh, World Series, Yankees and the Dodgers. And listen, I'm so far removed from the game now, and and the little things that we did to gain an advantage uh, pale in comparison to today. We were talking about details and and possibly uh, what these teams might be doing to gain an advantage. In your day, what what did you try to catch guys doing cheating wise? Uh, maybe during a game, signals from second base and stuff. Obviously, I know that still goes on, but um, who do you think has better details, the Yankees or the Dodgers? Dodgers for sure. Um, uh, I, I think with in, in, in what little I know, Dave, and the time I spent with him in spring training uh, after they won, it, it's it's got to be the Dodgers to me. And, and you can go all the way back to Terry Francona and the analytics to steal the base against Mariano Rivera. So I think he's taken yep. that his whole entire career and baseball life. Dave Roberts has. So um, I'm going to go with Dave Roberts on that one, but. Man, look, you have so much star power in, in this World Series, and I know everybody's talking about it, but it's going to be like what stars shine the brightest in this and, and, and what bullpens can, you know, hold up to me. Did you have any tricks, especially coming from the south and playing up north and later on in the season, right around October, Boston nights in October, did you have any tricks to the trade to staying warm, especially your pitch, your pitching arm, and things like that when you get into a cold-weather ball game? Yeah, I didn't really. Um, you know, closers were pretty fortunate in my days. We didn't have to go out to the bullpen until about the sixth or seventh <laughs> inning. So I got to stay in the clubhouse most of the time. And uh, <laughs> I, But I've seen it all. I've seen the red hot on, on the sack. I've seen them eating the red hot. I had one guy tell me he's got a heat from within, so he ate red hot. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, I, I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah. That's Some crazy. guys will do crazy things. Yes. They will. They will. But I, I was never, um, I never really got that cold. Plus, I knew the hitters hated being in the cold weather more than I did. Right. Right. And I'm from New England, and I knew that. I never pissed in sleeves or anything because, like you said, you could have a jacket on until the last second uh, to go out there. As far as what you've seen, though, I mean, whether it's Shohei or Judge, Juan Soto, Mookie Betts, some of these guys are doing stuff that's just so ridiculous. I don't think people appreciate how amazing it is. You know, we played at that level. It's not easy. Uh, Shohei's a giant guy. I mean, he's like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, stealing 50 bases. Um, I mean, obviously the rules kind of help these guys a little bit, but still he's taking a lot of abuse, stealing a lot of bases. I- I'm impressed by some of these guys, just what they what they do, you know, on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, I am too as well. And, and, and you know, um, you know, when you play with certain stars that are on your team, you don't really view them as stars. You just kind of view them as a teammate until, like, after I'm done playing, now I see all the stars that I played with and how much further in advance they were. You know, I've always said this. The Hall of Fame player has every attribute you could possibly ask for. You know, your perennial all-stars just have maybe one or a half of, uh, um, you know, part of their game that's not as good, and then you just go on down from there. But, um, yeah, the, the Shohei, to me, amazes me, the the, the ability that he has. It, it's I've never seen nothing like it. I know nobody else has. 
What are your thoughts on the closer, the recent closer for the New York Yankees, Luke Weaver, a guy that really hasn't had this role the whole entire season, and he's come out in the playoffs and been one of the best. What are your thoughts on his game, and how do you think his success is going to be against these superstars of the Dodgers? He has success, and he's had success. But boy, oh boy, will we find out what he's really made of come the next seven games, buddy. That's a, there is no question about that. And, um, you know, to me, this is a pinnacle time in his career. If he goes out there and he has success, boy, will he, he might be the next Mariano. You never know. Um, but that is to yet to be t- determined, in my opinion. Talking to Jonathan Papelbon, and obviously your, your time uh, here in New England with the Red Sox. We have so many Red Sox fans. My wife's the biggest Red Sox fan. She was pumped that you're coming on. Um, you're you're you know playing in the postseason. I played in the postseason. There's nothing like it. It's so much fun. But you you got to play in some of the the most hallowed places in Fenway, Yankee Stadium, places like that. What what's it like? You know, walking in, even in the regular season, walking into Yankee Stadium as the opposing player. Uh, for some of these Dodgers guys that have maybe never experienced postseason before, then postseason having to go into New York, uh, it, it's nothing like Hollywood. This is actual real postseason baseball playing it like a Fenway, a Philly, uh, a New York. Yeah, I love the two places they're playing in. You got – Prima Donna Hollywood, Madonna Hollywood, and then you got the grit and the grind with the rats in the street of New York, man. So I, I love it. Uh, me going into old Yankee Stadium was way different than going into new Yankee Stadium, but it doesn't matter. It's playoffs, that aura, that feeling. When you go into those stadiums, I don't care who you are as a player. You can act like you don't feel that. You can act cool and say, oh, I'm not nervous. BS. You feel it in those environments, in your Fenways, in your New Yorks, and in your L.A. It's just, it's a feeling you can't describe, but yet that's why Vegas pays attention to it, because they know how much it matters, home field. Describe your routine on games like tonight. Uh, Dibs has talked about his 1990 experience was a lot about getting people tickets and making sure everybody was <laughs> in their seats and everything was taken care of on that front. For you, 2007, is there like a fanfare about it these days like the Super Bowl has? Is it change your routine? What's really different about World Series games versus all the other postseason play? The, I never changed my um, routine. My routine was based upon how I felt every day. I didn't have a straight, exact routine. My routine was to go and find out what was hurting, what felt good, what I needed to work on. Then I went into doing things. But, um, you know, I, I think as far as, you know, these World Series games are going to be so pinnacle for these guys to go – and, and and have success in, in a way that you know what like you got to shut all this crap out you got to shut all this noise out and I, I don't know man for me we had great travel and secretary this is the time the travel with secretary makes his money and this is the reason why you give him a bonus because he takes care of all that crap for you so you can try to focus on the game you know all right go back to Yankee Stadium warming up in the bullpen. What are they close enough to you? And I obviously old Yankee Stadium or new Yankee Stadium, um, close enough to you to where it has some effect to it. Dodger Stadium's the worst, dude. You got you got bleachers to your right. You got the knuckleheads that are right next to you on the left constantly. I think it was the Padres where they threw some stuff at the guys in the bullpen. Yeah. People don't realize, yeah. and I know I, you know you and I were late inning guys, uh, closers uh, for some of my career. Um, but we'd go down in about the fifth inning um, anyway just because we, we liked it. Um, you know, a lot of my teammates like to interact and give crap back to the fans. What, what's it like going to be like for these Dodgers players to try to warm up at Yankee Stadium? Man, Dibs, I, I, I tell you what, um, there's nothing like a Yankee, uh, and especially an obnoxious Yankee fan. <laughs> um, so, for me, you know, you know they're going to feel it, but – As a player, if you don't use that for your advantage and you don't use that to pump you up, just like you said, what did you say, your boys, they they loved it, right? Yeah. They probably love that atmosphere because it pumped them up. And so if you don't use that, then, man, you're a dead man. 
<laughs> no, that my favorite is in San Diego, old Jack Murphy Stadium. Guy threw a hot dog at Norm Charlton warming up, hit the ground, he dirt, and he picked it up and ate oh, it. Oh, God. <laughs> now, he's like you. He's wow, a southern dude. boy. He's from Texas. So I know you're from Mississippi. I mean, what what's the most well, disgusting? Awesome. What's the most disgusting <laughs> thing that that ever happened to you in the bullpen? Maybe you didn't do it, but maybe one of your teammates did. Um, the most disgusting thing is the guy took his leg off a prosthetic leg and asked me to sign it one time. I did, <laughs> and it was like uh, it was like all like real skin and stuff on it, and it kind of freaked me out. That was the weirdest thing that ever happened to me. Did you? Did you sign it? Yeah, of course I signed it. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's like even my wife would be like, man, I, you signed this and this. I'm like, hey, man, if somebody asked for your autograph, you got to feel lucky enough that they wanted to, and you got to give it to them. Well said. <laughs> All right, give our Red Sox fans some hope for 25. A lot of people are oh, saying that, you know, they're a lot better than what their record said. They made some pushes there at the end. They hung around a lot more than we expected them to at the beginning of the season. But what do they need? What things do the Red Sox need to do to get back into the postseason? Well, first and foremost, they've got to continue to build that culture in that clubhouse. Um, Alex Cora's got to continue that, find his leaders. He's going to need Jaron Duran to come back and be a leader, Tristan Costa to come back and be a leader, and Tanner Houck's going to have to lead, be the leader on the pitching staff, okay? Uh, secondly, if they don't find a closer, if they don't find somebody yeah. that can lock it down, they're going to be cooked again this year, count playoffs off. They got to work on their bullpen. They've got to get arms in that bullpen, no question about it. Um, and then you got to look. You got to spend money, but you know I don't know if y'all watched the '04 documentary that's out now. John Henry used to spend a whole lot more money than what he's spending now, comparative to you know, you know things, inflation, etc. But yeah. Man, I, I tell you what, he's got to spend money. You know, let me tell you, you know, I used to tell my my teammates, you pay to win this game. You don't play to win. You pay to win. Look at the World Series right now. Well said. Right. right. Got two high payrolls, right? Yep. Give the kids the money. All right, we got Halloween coming up, and I know last time you were on, you are talking about you're, <laughs> you're kind of like, you know, daddy taxi service with the kids now uh, in retirement. Um, do you go around with the kids for Halloween? What's Halloween like down in Mississippi? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to the country club, and, and, and I'm out here hacking it up right now, actually. But, um, <laughs> yeah, we're going to go out, and we're going to go to the country club. And, see, I teach my kids how to really do Halloween. You know what I mean? If you go to the house and you only say, take one, nah, you, that's your fault. You take the whole bowl. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, go, we, go for, we, we go for quantity, not quality. <laughs> do you know costumes already? Do we have costumes picked out? Uh, no, I don't, I don't, I don't. Uh, I think I might do a little Yellowstone action, you know, maybe some assless chaps, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you are the best. All right, go back to golfing. Tell your tell your buddies and mates, thank you for letting us have you for 15 minutes, Jonathan. So enjoy the, enjoy the World Series. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, sir. Yeah, have fun. Enjoy watching the World Series, guys. We'll see you. All right, brother. Everybody, Jonathan Papabon, Red Sox Hall of Fame inductee this year. Gotta love uh, he is the best. And, uh, you know, I think he may have had a couple of adult beverages. No, so I, no. I think he kept that clean. He Not kept Boston, that interview clean. Red Sox, Boston pitchers, they I, don't drink. I, what do you think it's like for having him at the country club? The worst. A lot worse than you. I think oh, absolutely. You, you have conformed to the country club Because ways. my in-laws didn't belong there for 40 years. My wife belonged there for 30 years. So His may have spitters, though, still left over from, you know, long time I, ago. Next time he comes on, we got to talk about that. What is your country club like? Got to have spitters. Spittoons. <laughs> Do they – I mean, I, I can only imagine Mississippi, man. I That's know. hardcore I south know. right there. Yeah. That is hardcore south. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. Uh, we doing Brandon Lang next? Uh, who you got? Oh, who next? you got next? We had to push Lang that back. Ba- back All right, in. so yeah. uh, Brandon Lang will be in the last hour of the show. Yeah. Who you got coming up next? Woo. 91.7.